All righty, let's see. I think the phone lines are open right now, so let's go back and talk about something that's going to make a lot of people very, very, very unhappy. Uh, the IAEA announced that they are making gains towards a nuclear framework deal with Iran. You know, they're 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 talking, uh, you know, in in Vienna right now about how they can sort of get everybody to relax about what Iran is doing with their nuclear technology that they are allowed to have under the nuclear nonproliferation treaty. And this, of course, will make things a lot easier uh, for the P5 talks in, you know, in uh, uh, the, the negotiations with the world powers. So. Uh, in response to this, Israel and the White House uh, said, well, basically a lot of stuff we can't legally repeat on this radio station, but you get the idea. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. And aloha, America. Welcome back to the show here. We're talking about what's going on over in Iran. And various observers are starting to talk about what they're calling the Parchin Deception, which sounds like a really cool title for a movie. And I want to bid the visual effects when it comes out there. Um, basically, it refers to this rather silly, absurd piece of propaganda that came out last week where an anonymous source made a description of something they saw inside this facility near Parchin that looks like it's the middle of a farm. And they, they did a computer graphic illustration of this tube and box thing, which they said happens to be a explosive test chamber for nuclear weapons. And this computer graphic proves that they're building nuclear weapons over there. And we satellite photos show water on the ground, so they're washing away the evidence. Which, by the way, you can't just wash away radioactivity. Once a building is made radioactive by nuclear research, hosing it down doesn't do any good. So that was a joke to begin with. Well, it turns out that an expert in the manufacture or fabrication of what are called nano diamonds took a look at this computer illustration that is supposed to be this weapons development testing chamber, and said it looks exactly like the kind of explosive chamber used to create nanodiamonds, which have industrial and medical applications. And as a matter of fact, the uh, Iranian scientist, former Soviet scientist living in Iran, that is accused of helping the Iranians build nuclear weapons isn't a nuclear weapon expert. His specialty is creation of nanodiamonds using explosives. The guy makes diamonds, and that's what this box appears to do. But they're going to take a computer illustration of an industrial machine with a rather benign purpose, and they're going to just say, oh, this proves nuclear weapons. Do you remember back when Colin Powell was showing these blurred photos taken from satellites? And everybody was saying, why are you showing us these blurred black and white photos? Because our satellites take pictures in color. And they're a lot sharper than that. And Colin Power said, don't ask these questions or the terrorists will win. And they point to this white blur and say, this is a decontamination vehicle. And they point to this other blur and say, this is an obvious, you know, tanker full of sarin gas. And then after the invasion, people went over and they found it was just fire trucks. Ordinary, everyday fire trucks. Fire department is what they photographed and said, oh, this is an uh, Iraqi biological weapons lab. It's just that blatant. Remember the balloon inflators they kept insisting were mobile biological weapons lab? They're doing exactly the same thing all over again. Only this time we know it. We're not going to give the government the benefit of the doubt on this stuff. And I understand we're not going to be able to stop the maniacs inside the government of the United States of America and the maniacs inside the government of Israel from launching yet another war on an innocent, unoffending nation, this time Iran. But what we can do, what we all should agree to do, is to deny these maniacs the illusion that they have actually convinced anybody on this planet of the moral rightness of their war. We can remove from them their sense of moral rightness. And without that sense of moral rightness, they're going to lose the war. Because if you go all the way back to Art of War by Sun Tzu, you know, he wrote thousands of years ago, victory goes to the army which believes they have the moral law on their side. That is not Israel. That is not the United States of America. Now, Russia is already out there warning that an invasion into Syria and Iran could easily go nuclear. And what Russia is saying is absolutely true. And it's not a case of Russia threatening to use nuclear weapons on everybody. It is the realization that the United States lacks the men, the money, and the manufacturing to win a new world war. And sometime between this very second 
and final capitulation of the United States government, they will start turning those little keys on the nuclear weapons. They will have no choice in their own mind. So, yeah, we're on the doorstep of a nuclear world war. And the United States and Israel, they're the bad guys. Now, over in Iran, the crown prince, notice they're already saying, oh, yes, he's crown prince. He is eligible to be the ruler. The son of the Shah of Iran is out there uh, urging Israel and the United States once again that they need to help the Iranian people topple their democratically elected government. Isn't that what elections are for? Well, actually not really, because remember, back in 1953, all the problems between the United States and Iran go back to 1953, when the Central Intelligence Agency, the sweetest smelling spies in the world, went into Iran and overthrew the democratically elected government of Mohammad Mossadegh, and they imposed the Shah of Iran on the Iranian people, who drove them into poverty, who sold off uh, Iran's... Uh, natural resources to American and British oil companies at below market rates and he oppressed the Iranian people he had this secret police the Savak that tortured anybody who stood up uh, to challenge what he was doing with the country and then in 1979 the Iranian people had enough of this nonsense and they kicked the Shah out and they elected a new government and ever since then the United States has had this attitude how dare you kick out our puppet ruler you're not supposed to do that You're a province of the new American empire. You're not supposed to break free. And ever since then, they've been trying to reconquer the place. First through Iraq. It was the U.S. that goaded Iraq to invade Iran and provided all the weapons and everything. That didn't work out too well. And then uh, two years ago, they tried another coup d'etat. Same exact thing they did back in 1953. And they kind of blew it because you remember all these staged riots where, or protests where, they're, where they'd have all these people waving the flag of Iran in front of the media camera saying, we want a change in government, we want a change in government. And then some smart person pointed out that the flag that, w- that were being handed out of those vans were the flags of the Shah's government. And the Iranian people said, oh, we don't want those. We don't want that back at all. And the whole thing began, it fell apart. So now two years later, and the son of the Shah is back out there saying, I'm the crown prince. And I want my kingdom back, and you should help me. And then I will give you cheap oil. And, uh, again, they tried that back in 210, and it didn't work. And even after 30 years, um, even after 30 years, it just, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. And uh, for, the Shah, for the son of the Shah of Iran to step up and open his mouth is only going to harm the case. Because it's simply going to underscore to everybody. The goal here is not democracy in Iran or anywhere else, but the imposition of another U.S. puppet ruler to exploit the land and its people for the benefit of American corporations. And boy, they're desperate for that war. They are so desperate to get this war going before the economy deteriorates any further and makes things look bad. Anyway, let's see. Phone lines are open, 800-313-9443, 800-313-9443. Somebody wrote this interesting article about every time you hear about these negotiations with the Arab and Muslim world, the first thing that comes out is you must renounce violence. You must renounce violence. You must renounce renounce violence. And this is kind of absurd because, well, in this case, it isn't Iran that's resorting to violence. It's the United States and it's Israel. And if there is going to be peace in the region, we need to step back and say, who is the aggressor, who is the belligerent, and who is the innocent, unoffending target of all this violence? And, of course, it is pretty much the inverse of what the corporate media is telling you it is. All righty, let's see. We already talked about Russia warning on Syria and uh, Iran. And Russia is right. This next war, this next ex- escalation will go nuclear. In fact, it's entirely possible that the United States is planning to launch the war with Iran with nuclear weapons. Some of these bunker busters and some of these cruise missiles do have nuclear warheads. They could send them in, blow something up, and then say, oh, all that radioactivity is proof that we hit a clandestine nuclear weapons laboratory. That's what they're going to do here. Meanwhile, we touched on this story briefly yesterday, but we're going to hit it uh, again here uh, today, that Obama is declaring a state of emergency through an executive order that allows him to start grabbing the property of uh, Yemenis. Any of their properties and, and, and assets in the United States are now being seized by the United States government. Not getting a lot of coverage, but the obvious first step 
toward escalating the wars of conquest into Yemen. Okay. By the way, uh, Dan in the control room was reminding me that we, we should remind everybody out there in the audience, all these nuclear sites in Iran that Israel and the U.S. are all screaming about bad stuff, Iran didn't build them. For the most part, they were built by French and Chinese, and certainly in the case of the power plant, Russian companies who know for a fact what these facilities will and will not do. And again, it underscores this claim that there's some big, vast Iranian secret weapons lab buried down there somewhere, like the one underneath Dimona. Meanwhile, one of our many phony al-Qaeda terrorists is back on TV again today screaming about Saudi Arabia has to rise up and overthrow their evil government. And I'm not saying that the government of Saudi Arabia doesn't have problems, because they all do. But this has nothing to do with the people of Saudi Arabia or even its government. This is the opening salvo in the propaganda war leading to the invasion and conquest of Saudi Arabia once Iran is out of the way. And this is kind of a payback because Saudi Arabia has kind of looked the other way as Israel and the United States have clobbered their neighbors. In fact, they've kind of provided some covert support and assistance. The Saudi Arabia ruling family thought that if they were all buddy-buddy with the United States of America, it would keep them safe from these uh, Israel-sponsored invasions. And wrong, we can see clearly the propaganda campaign cranking up here. Meanwhile, Israel is out there screaming they want Olympic silence for Munich, which is fine. I would be delighted if Israel would stay silent about Munich because I, for one, am sick of all the whining. This constant reminder of things that happened so long ago, normally we would not remember them. Tired of the whining, I really am. 